What's up, challengers? Welcome to the gym. My name is Jim Leader Geo, and this is the locker room, week two of season six of the GBA. As the Giantes team build for our opponent Coop and his team, the Utah Jasmine. As you can see, as always in these videos, I have our eleven drafted mon on the left and right side of the screen, and um, on the right side of the screen, I like to order my opponent's team in order from most to least likely as I see it, that they're gonna be bringing those mons. So I'll go over my 11 first. I have Entei, Manaphy, Cresselia, Zapdos, Nidoking, Mega Absol, Miltank, Chestnut, Miss Magius, Ditto, and Regirock. And um, on the right, you can see that Coop's got, uh, he's got Agron 11 different times. So uh, it's gonna be a pretty hard matchup this week, not gonna lie. Um, 11 Agrons is, it's a difficult team. It really is. And the the thing is about that is, is Agron's a really diverse Pokemon. So he could run, he could run uh, four different head smashes on one of them. He could run three different head smashes and a different coverage move like um, head smash or like uh, he could um, he could run banded head smash. He could run um, uh, just like a normal head smashing variant. Uh, he could run the item head smash on it, uh, but more likely he'll run bright powder. So uh, that's it. That's my team builder. I just I, I forfeit because he's too good at clicking head smash. Um, um, let's go. Act, let's actually go over what I, what his real team is. <laughs> Sorry, everyone. I had to be silly here for a second, but don't worry. I promise that now that I'm done with this, the silliness is over, and I'll put in order uh, the Pokemon that I think he's uh, he's going to be bringing here. So there we go. Uh huh. Click those. Click that. These are all buttons. Okay. Uh, <laughs> let's now go over his actual team, and let me explain a little bit about the eleven mon and kind of organizing them here. Um, Greninja is one of his eleven. He's got Mega Gallade, Staraptor, Gliscor, Clefable, Agron, Magnezone, Empoleon, Claydol, Sableye, and Weezing. And I have them in roughly the order from most to least likely, but this doesn't mean that the top six are the six I think he's bringing, and I'll explain why. The top three are basically a given. I, I don't see any reason he doesn't bring Greninja, Mega Gallade, and Staraptor. It's his primary offensive core. They're all pretty fast, they all hit pretty hard, they're relatively hard to defend against, and then the remaining three Mon uh, kind of depend a lot on Coop's outlook on the game, and so I had to kind of prepare for that in a lot of different ways. So one thing he could do is he could run a pretty effective, very offensive team. Normally that's not his style, and Coop's pretty good at sticking to his style, so I don't think he's going to do that, but it's definitely something he can and I think has done in the past. So thinking about that, there's a good chance that any of his other offensive mon come, but not all of them. And so even though some of them are relatively higher order here, um, I don't think they're all coming. But as far as the remaining Pokemon, Gliscor I have at fourth. Uh, the reason for that is I think it's just... I think looking at the matchup, he thinks it's going to be really important for him to check some of my offensive mons. Um, I think Clefable's there because Clefable does something for his team that no one else on his team really actually can, and that's uh, that's Cleric support. Of course, Gallade actually can, but I'm going to choose to ignore that that's a that's possibility. I really don't think he runs a defensive Gallade, a uh, defensive Mega Gallade. Um, could. He could. That thing gets Wish, so <laughs> why not? But I don't think he will. Um... So I think he brings Clef for that reason. I think he's going to want to have that option there. But neither of those Pokemon match up particularly well against my team, and I'll explain why in just a second here. Next we have Agron, and we also have Magnezone right after. I think there's roughly equal chance that he brings either of these Pokemon, and it's very difficult to determine why I think he would bring one or the other. I think Agron is slightly more likely I think the reason is, one, he really does like Agron, and two, a banded head smash is very difficult to deal with. I think I've found a way to do it relatively effectively, but it's still very hard to deal with. The other is uh, Magnezone, 
and he is more than likely going to, if he brings this Pokemon, run it Choice Specs. Now, he could run it Sturdy, and there's no reason for him to run Magnet Pool, because I don't have any Steel types. So, probably he would run Analytic with Specs, or if he runs Agron, Choice Band with, um, I'll get into that a little bit more later, but then the next two Pokemon are Empoleon and Claydol because those are his hazard controllers. Neither of them match up well against my team, but I imagine he wants the ability to remove hazards. Um, so, uh, it's hard to say which one I think he'll bring. There's not a great reason for him to bring Agron and Magnezone. But if he did, he would bring Clay Doll because there's no way he's bringing three Steel types in a matchup against me. The bottom two are Sableye, someone who cannot stand up. He cannot stand up against any of my offensive Mon. They wreck him. And Weezing, who I, <laughs> I guess I must have overlooked. I did a bunch of calcs on him recently. Weezing can survive quite a few hits from some of my Mon. Um, a relatively good defensive option, but does absolutely nothing back except click pain split and hope that that's enough. Uh, most of his attacks are negligible against half of my team which is relatively bulky and just in general there's a really really low chance that I think he brings that Pokemon. So we're going to show you my team here. We have got DDG the Cresselia, Sporty Spice the Manaphy, Zap Zap the Zapdos, Decisions the Entei, Prince, Nidoking, and Dwayne the Reggie Rock Johnson. So I'll have that reflect in my in my team build here. Bringing Entei, Manaphy, Cresselia, Zapdos. No Mega Absol this week, no Ditto this week, no Chestnut, no Miltank, and no Miss Magius. So there you have my six, and I'm going to go over the sets for you guys now. DDG is bringing Moonblast, Ice Beam, Psycho Shift, and Moonlight. Sporty Spice is bringing Scald, Tail Glow, Rain Dance, and Rest. Zapdos is bringing Thunderbolt, Volt Switch, Heat Wave, and Hidden Power Ice. Decisions is bringing Sacred Fire, Extreme Speed, Iron Head, Rain Dance. Prince is bringing Earth Power, Sludge Wave, Ice Beam, and Stealth Rock. And Dwayne is bringing Rock Slide, Earthquake, Ice Punch, and Drain Punch. Now, let's go over these sets a little more closely. But if you guys just wanted the screen cap, I basically just gave it to you. But let's talk about the sets a little bit more in detail. Cresselia is my main answer to Gallade. Effectively, my only answer to Gallade if Gallade comes in against a mom that it outspeeds and Okos. Because if that's the case and I'm forced to switch, I want something that can survive a Swords Dance attack. So DDG is kind of my answer for that. Running Moonblast, Ice Beam, Psycho Shift, and Moonlight. However, even though this team is in the process of being genned as we speak, I'm actually going to, I think, when I get this Pokemon, change Psycho Shift to Thunder Wave. The reason being, I would like to switch in on the Gallade as it goes for Swords Dance, more than likely. Um, the next thing I would anticipate it to do is to hit me with a knockoff, which ordinarily he might think would do a tremendous amount of damage to me however because of the colberberry it probably won't at that point he's now slower than me and i'm free to go for a moonlight to try and get a little more health back or click a moon blast to try and weaken him ddg probably won't be able to 1v1 the gallade but he will be able to do enough damage that gallade will fall into extreme speed range on the entei so that's my main point here Gallade needs to be weakened just enough to be able to be revenge killed by my other Pokemon. Um, I don't anticipate that DDG is going to one-on-one -on -one this monster. It, If it doesn't pack Swords Dance, it probably can, but even an adamant Swords Dance knockoff against uh, Colberberry Max Defense Latias is not even a... It, it's so little on the first hit, it's something like 30%. And then thereafter, I think it's only something like 40. So I should be able to survive multiple. Um, moonlight off some of the damage, maybe on the second hit. So maybe after I get him with a, a T-Wave, I can hit him with a Moon Blast. And then if he's chosen to attack me a second time, I can get a Moonlight back up. And um, then I'll be able to survive another one unless he opts to go for another Swords Dance. But if he does that, he just lost a turn that allows me another Moon Blast. And then he is definitely revengeable by almost anybody on my team. So that is the point of DDG. Cresselia has notable other good switch-ins. 
I said notable, not no other. So he's an amazing switch in against against Gliscor. Gliscor can't do very much to him at all. Uh, also a good switch into Agron, but will primarily be a backup for that purpose. A decent switch into Clefable. In general, a relatively good switch in all around. However, I'm going to... Part of my game plan this week is to really protect this Cresselia and save it for that Gallade because I don't want to allow that Gallade... Um, a free kill every time it comes in. My goal this week is to prevent that from being the case about a lot of these Pokemon. Sporty Spice is running a 252 HP, 40 defense, 108 special attack, 108 special defense, calm nature. That seems like a mouthful, and the Scald Tail Glow Rain Dance rest set seems curious, I'm sure, to many of you also. Allow me to explain the reason for all of this. Um, Manaphy is my Greninja switch-in. He's running leftovers and a defense investment that allows me to survive a 3-hit KO, or make it a 4-hit KO, on both a max attack adamant physical Greninja and a max special attack modest special Greninja if it's running life orb. If it's not running life orb, I will notice that immediately, and I'll be able to figure out the correct way to counteract this Greninja. So every time that Greninja comes in and tries to get an attack off on Manaphy, Manaphy will get the next turn free to either set up a Rain Dance and maybe play with Rests, which I will be able to get off. I know Rain Dance Rest isn't a great form of reliable recovery against something, but it is when the Mon can't 4-hit, can't even 3-hit KO you. So I'll switch in, and I'll take an attack, and if it's the right attack right away, like he went for um, Dark Pulse on a special Greninja, and he's modest, and he's Life Orb, then I'll be able to hit the Rain Dance next turn, um, assuming I don't flinch, and then I'll be able to hit Rest on the following turn, assuming I don't flinch. So, uh, and then if he succeeds in all those things, props to him, <laughs> getting flinches or, or whatnot, and I'll just have to revenge him. So that's the primary reason for Manaphy is to be the defensive switch into Greninja. The Scald Tail Glow um, as my offensive core is because very few things can take it, and I have a lot of opportunities to set up that Tail Glow. Um, even if it's an unaware Clefable and the Tail Glow doesn't matter, under the Rain Dance, which will affect my damage, I can still two or three hit KO that Clefable, and it can do next to nothing back to me. So that's the purpose of Sporty Spice. Zap Zap is running a Choice Scarf Static uh, set this week uh, with absolutely no debug. So, and you might notice I don't have uh, Ditto either, so I don't have Hazard Control this week. Um, I'm running Thunderbolt, Volt Switch, Heat Wave, and Hidden Power Ice on this set. My investment is 100 HP, 252 Modest Special Attack, and 156 Speed. That Speed tier that I have hit will allow me to outspeed the entire team barring Scarfs. And the only Scarf Mon that he has that would outspeed me are Greninja and Gliscor and everything else on his entire team. The next fastest Mon he has outside of those... Oh, I'm sorry, um, Staraptor also. But if it's a Scarf Staraptor, I'm not too worried about it. I'm pretty sure if he brings Staraptor, it's banded. Pretty sure. Obviously, there's a chance that he doesn't. Um, the Staraptor actually has a very curious uh, way it can run its sets by being scarfed intimidate it's an amazing scout by being reckless choice band it's actually a little bit more of a hole puncher and it kind of depends what he wants to do with it this week i think if he brings agron he'll probably bring a scarfed intimidate set just because he doesn't need to double up on bands um but you know Coop could do anything. This is Cooper talking about here. But if he is scarfed, he will outspeed this Zap Zap, but I didn't want to lose some of this bulk uh, in an attempt to ensure that I outspeed this, and I really did want the power. So everything outside of non-scarfed those mons will get outsped, and my speed tier specifically, if you guys are wondering, are to outspeed a scarfed clay doll, <laughs> which, uh... Hey, you gotta do something. I, I mean, I could have pulled some of that and only really worried about maybe the base 60s that might be running scarfs, like the Magnezone, for example, could be scarf. But I, I didn't feel it necessary to pick up whatever it would be, a couple of extra, maybe like 50 extra EVs in HP. I don't think it would help me survive any notable calcs that I did for Zap Zap. And Zap Zap's offensive this week. I'm not supposed to be tanking i just wanted a little bit of that extra investment for what it's worth i think actually uh 
one of these is wrong. Because I, I think maybe I did this and one extra defense or something like that. Uh, the EVs are not perfect. Uh, I know that Zap Zap was EV'd to have an odd number HP. So uh, don't, <laughs> don't jump on me about that one, guys. Uh, he is running Thunderbolt, Volt Switch, Heat Wave, and Hidden Power Ice. Thunderbolt and Volt Switch being my stab moves and my coverage moves of Fire and Ice do exceptionally well against his team. The Ice coverage notably helps me against the Gliscor, which otherwise would wall me pretty hard. Uh, Mr. Decisions. Decisions is running two moves that he almost always runs, one of the two moves that he'll run in the third slot, and then a fourth move that I've never brought on him before that... <laughs> um, Sacred Fire, Extreme Speed, Iron Head, and Rain Dance. Let's be honest, the fourth move Decisions brings is almost never clicked unless there's a very specific reason to bring it, and that would be in the case of if I have a particularly bad matchup against a bulky water. This team doesn't really have that issue, and he doesn't have a particularly bulky water. Last season, that was a really big thing for Entei, and I ended up clicking fourth move, which was usually toxic quite a lot of, quite a few times, but I don't really need to for this. A Choice Banded Sacred Fire absolutely murders so many people on this team, and I know you're thinking, Rain Dance is going to weaken that. Don't worry. There's, I've assessed a lot of the play-by-play -play situations, and there's very few in which I would be forced into decisions. Decisions is opportunistic, so I bring in decisions when it makes sense to do so. Um, and it obviously wouldn't make sense to do so if I was recently setting up the rain and playing around with, um, with Sporty Spice. Decisions, offensively, there's plenty of times for him to come in, but there's very few needs for him to come in. Like... Even his resistance to Fairy is not going to be all that important to me because Clefable really doesn't threaten my team at all. And going into why that's the case is this next little beauty right here, Prince, uh, who is a Life Orb, Sheer Force, Earth Power, Sludge Wave, Ice Beam, Stealth Rock, Nitto King. Uh, the Stealth Rock is because I would like the option to have some hazards uh, and get a little bit of hazard control on his side of the field. Uh, it will be ideal for me to really chip away at that Staraptor if it's not a lead or an early option for him that he suicides out. It'll break any potential sashes, of which potential sashes include Greninja. And, um, pretty much Greninja. <laughs> Basically just Greninja. You could run a sashed Magnezone. Could be a thing also, because that would allow Magnezone. But, I mean... More than likely, if you would run a sash on Magnezone, you would run an air balloon. But for for all those reasons, it's useful to have the option for Stealth Rock there. And Prince forces a lot of switches. And if he's playing around a lot of uh, baiting me to go for Sludge Wave, but then, you know, switching out to Aggron or something like that, I don't want to mess with that. Earth Power is the primary stab against a majority of his team. It, of course, does not affect... Uh, Weezing, Gliscor, or Staraptor. For those Pokemon, I have Ice Beam, which is amazing against all of them. Even the, even though it's not super effective against the Weezing, it, it'll still two-hit KO it. And the Sludge Wave is almost exclusively for the Clefable, who uh, will be O-Code by it even after a Calm Mind. So, uh, his set is not too unusual. Uh, I should go over, I think I skipped the EVs on Decisions. Both Decisions and Prince have the same speed EVs, and the purpose of that was to outspeed everything on his team up to uninvested base 100s, and the significance of an uninvested base 100 is that that's a very common EV goal for Gliscors to run, because Gliscor is 95 speed. Now, he could run an offensive Gliscor and he would outspeed me, and that's something I'd, I'll need to scout out for on Decisions and on prints. However, it's unlikely that he does that, and even if he did, that's still not particularly an issue for me, because that would mean that Zap Zap's Hidden Power Ice would Oko it. So, all of this is good information for me. Finally, we have Dwayne the Reggie Rock Johnson. Now, I really wanted to name this big boy man. I've been running uh, big boy man and, and big man boy and things like that on my Reggie Rocks for a while, but I could not pass up the shiny Reggie Rock being nicknamed Dwayne. I really honestly could not do that. He is running... God, again, all these IVs got messed up when I transported it over. He's running... Um, 
this set, 252 HP, 252 defense, and a trickle of points into attack. Dwayne's job here. I know a lot of people think of Reggie Rock as someone who, thun or who thunder waves and who stealth rocks, and Dwayne has a much different purpose for this team. His defense investment allows him to completely wall Staraptor and an offensive Agron. So he is the primary switch in for those Mons. He should not be on the battlefield unless he comes in against one of those Mons. Um, or unless I predict one of those Mons as a lead and want to lead with Reggie Rock uh, in return. So I had to give a lot of coverage to kind of prepare for that. So Rock Slide is my primary stab and hits a majority of his team hard. However, I need coverage. Earthquake is the strongest thing I can hit the Agron and the Magnezone for, um, and the Empoleon, and the uh, Gallade. So that's the purpose of Earthquake. Ice Punch is there for things that resist the Edgequake combo. It does particularly well against the Gliscor in particular, which is something that might very well want to switch in against the Regirock. So, it's also super effective against the Raptor, so I won't feel bad clicking it if I'm in against a Seraptor. Even though Rock Slide would do more damage, it's still better for me to click Ice Punch in, in case he switches into Gliscor to try and take that. Drain Punch is there to maybe get a little bit of recovery on me. It also hits pretty hard against the Greninja. Strongest hitting move I have against the Greninja. And um, in general, that is the primary purpose of Regirock. So... Let's talk finalized team structure for this week. Uh, I need to defend. This seems weird. Normally you throw in your defensive mon a lot to kind of chip away at the team so you can come in and sweep with the offense. Uh, at least that's how I've been playing a lot in previous seasons. I'm kind of switching that up. I need to defend Dwayne and DDG because if he does that exact same strategy I talked about, saving his offensive mon and bringing them in at an inopportune time for me, he can really hurt my team. So... In order to counteract that, I need to play very early offense and try and sit back on these defensive mons and only bring them in if he's trying to revenge me with one of his potent offensive mons. So, Dwayne needs to be there to switch in against that Staraptor. I need to very quickly discover whether or not that thing is scarfed or banded, and I need to figure out maybe what it's, what it's, what it's going for here. Um, I need to, I need to try and keep be mindful of the offensive mon that I need to keep at any given situation. So decisions is really important to keep around just in general to hit everything, but he's not mandatory. He's a good backup for killing things that might be difficult to kill if I lose other important mon. A good example being Nidoking against the Clefable. If the Nidoking goes down really early, Clefable becomes a little bit harder to take on. Decisions being my primary physically offensive monster, he's not going to be very good at surviving against decisions. Notably, uh, decisions will be a good mid-game super for me because he doesn't really have a great switch into it in general. Um, a physically defensive Empoleon doesn't really stand up to it. A very physically defensive Agron does okay, uh, but doesn't want to be burned. If he ran a defensive Greninja, that's just a Lord play, but I don't even think that does the thing, that does the trick either. He can't switch in on it really with the uh, with the Gliscor. And so just in general, it's kind of a problem for him. Zap Zap, I needed the speed coverage. I needed the Scarfer to help me out with Greninja because even though Manaphy is a great Greninja switch in, really careful gameplay with that Greninja might mean that I, I get chipped away at that Manaphy. And it's always just a great trump card to just be like, nope, sorry, Scarf, Zapdos, and I can Oko that Greninja or pick up some massive... Um, momentum by bolt switching around it. Um, Sporty Spice, another one of those. I mean, I call it my defensive core. It's It needs to stay healthy for the Greninja. So the important thing here is that once any of the top three row of Pokemon are gone, the Greninja is gone, the Gallade is gone, and the Staraptor are gone, um, or the Agron, I can be much more gung-ho with these three Pokemon, DDG, Sporty Spice, and Dwayne because they lose a lot of their value outside of that. They all do serve potential purpose to be very annoying to his team, but that is their role this week. And if I lose them in their role, 
it becomes much more of a revenge kill match and a tit for tat revenge kill match does not ideally suit my playstyle although I think I will still come out on top if that is what it becomes because every time he loses something uh, notable like defensive mon that would resist any of my offensive monsters once again he's he's in a really troublesome spot because what does he do next big issues for my team i mean i kind of said them uh i'm prepared for them i think the biggest issues for my team are all of the things i listed above i was looking into the risk that comes from the potential of him running a sub gallade set but if he runs sub swords dance gallade i can break that sub very easily even if he's defensive with my ddg's moon blast and the loss of coverage move on that means that there will be an option for a switch in all uh, on another way. I think there's a really good chance, even though I'm prepped and ready for him to be a Swords Dance Gallade, I think there's a good chance he doesn't run Swords Dance Gallade out of sheer terror that I would then have the option to become a Scarfed set up mega gallade if that's the case so i don't foresee him running set up this week out of fear of ditto and for a long time i was going to bring ditto uh, i was going to bring ditto as my primary greninja answer because greninja is actually a surprisingly good switch into greninja uh, when it doesn't have protean when it doesn't have protean it's actually a really good switch into greninja also but i'm not going to do that this week uh ditto staying home uh, it saddens me i really wish i could bring it but that stupid staraptor man uh reggie rock took his place and uh, it made me switch up this set a little bit to be an anti-Greninja. So that is my team, guys. Please be on the lookout for the battle going up against the Utah Jasmine tomorrow. As always, my name's Gym Leader Geo. You guys are the challengers. Thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you guys next time.